Hey there, and welcome back. So let's roll another video related to stable diffusion and Confi UI. So this time let's focus in XL version, SDXL, which so far is the best one. So previously we were working with uh, SDXL Turbo, the one that is almost real time, and then we do we did some upscaling. Now let's do some since directly using all the high definition, let's say the model, the XL. So it's very important. I always point out to the to the website now the original reference in this case now the model card they call it X, SDXL one, and here in the stability AI you are going to find all those. Uh, model cards, but what is important here, you need to, to know what you can do. So this model has something particular that you can use the base model and then the refiner. It's a two-step model. However, it's not compulsory to do the refining step. And actually you have here the know that this is more than enough. So probably you will find around some of workflows using the refiner. So it will be up to you to put that one. Personally speaking, I don't use it. For me, it's more than enough. This is not for what I'm looking for. So maybe some people that need something more professional, more details, will find some advantage in using the refiner. Then, well, you have more information there and just read there now from some details on, there are always shows to give you some interesting tips, no information. So we're going to use the same prompts that they have here. So an astronaut riding a green horse. So this one will be using the base model, no refiner. And this one will be using uh, the base model plus refiner. So the standard practice here also recommended by the guy for instability AI is like you do the base model 80% and then 20% you will do the refinement model. So later we're going to see how to do that as you know. And at this point also, I want to point out that the documentation that you have probably if you go to automatic 11.11, you have much better documentation. So I invite you to read here. No, it's very complete. Also something that you are going to find in this documentation is the is the size that was used to train the model. So this model was trained with this size. So you have to be very careful with that. And well, many much much information here at the end. Later I'm going to talk about this. Um, talking about now Comfy UI, the documentation is kind of limited. You have this uh, website where you have you now some some partial information, which is okay. Sometimes some, something is missing. So in the video description, you have the link. So at this point, let's move and let's work. Okay, with this prompts that we have here. So we open and we have a stable diffusion. Okay. The default workflow. So at the end of this video, hopefully we're going to work with this. Okay. By the way, I don't recommend you here. I have different tabs. I don't recommend you to open multiple tabs now. So you can put it there and then you have the other. So I don't recommend you, but it's up to you. Uh, so this is the stable diffusion the quite complex workflow. So I'm going to I already went through these groups and so on. So this, this is just notes, but here you see that you have the two ste uh, steps. Okay. Base and refinery step. So at the end of the day, we're going to see that, but just to show you that you can do exactly the same without that refinery step and using the default workflow, which is more than okay. So let me go and I already have the prone here. And it's this one. Let me put it here. Let me raise the final comma later. We're going to talk about that. Also, I have here this number. I want to fix the number. So it kind of cherry pick. Remember that it's a little bit random. So different random numbers, you're going to get different values. And also remember to use the library. So let's use the, uh, the base library. So you can download the base library almost here. You have the download. So here you have files and versions and remember that download the, when you have different actions, download the safe tensor in this case, this one, then sometimes you have like checkpoints and mice, all their stuff. Always go for the safe tensor. Uh, 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 so now let me click here. So everything is okay. I have my values and let's see what we get. Okay. Also I like here to put the preview. So let me go and preview here. I don't want to save that image. So preview and let me bypass this. Let's see if it read it. Okay. Well, didn't read it, but let me go bam, 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 put it again and change a little bit that value.
Okay, and there you go. So see that is randomized. I forgot to fix it. So different values see that you get different compositions, but pretty much it's not that what we're looking now. This SDXL is photorealistic. You should get quality photos. So let me go my get again this one. Let me change here and let me fix this one and let me go here. So, so far, this is cool. I have no problem with that, but I'm looking for something photorealistic. So what is the issue here and what was happening? Remember, this data set was trained with a dimension size of 1024. So look at that now. Let me change to the right size. So you can see that you have that strong dependence there in your latent dimension. So now we are using the right dimension and let's see what we have in our outcome. So we have the basic, this is the basic uh, setup, which is more than enough to get impressive images. And then if you want to refine whatever you have there, previously we addressed the ox scaling. So you can use a few ox scaling steps and that's okay that will give you a fantastic result. And this is very impressive already without the need of using that very complex, you now refining stuff, you now going into refinement. You already have something really, really good. So yeah, this is it. And for me, this is my workflow. I don't complicate things any more than this. And to show you something else about the dimensions of your latent. So now let me double my latent here. So now I know that my model wasn't trained with this. Let's see what happens if I get something much larger. Where will I get something better, worse? So let's see. First thing is that you will realize that it's much, much slower. So you increase your latent. This sampling here now, this operation, it will be much, much uh, slower. So you are denoising your data and you know, using your diffusion model to get here, your pixel space, and then put your image there. So let's wait a little bit. Also, well, in the, here in the prone, you can see the time. So the previous image, look at it, you have the times. So the one cartoon actually worked quite fast, 24. And now this is taking much, much longer. So the first generation also will take longer because you are you are loading this library. But as soon as you load the library, since will go faster. So let's wait. Okay, I'm back. So that was much slower than I was expecting and running some other processes in the background. So, but it was a long generation. So nevertheless, remember that you, you, you increase your, your latent size will be much slower, but this is also your output. The output is, is impressive, very nice, but usually this is what you get. You're going to get you no know, many, uh, repeated no figures and objects in your composition. And this is just due to the fact that it wasn't trained. You are using the, the wrong dimension. So when you start to see this one, you know that there is a problem now with your latent size, likely, but can be many things. So be careful about that. So let me go back to this dimension. Okay, it's taken longer than expected to, to get the image just because you know, I'm recording and I have some other processes running. <laughs> Uh, in background, but let's see. So now doing this to go back. So basically remember your, this is the seat, the randomness so different numbers, different outcomes. So be careful about that because sometimes you don't get a composition that you, you, you don't like, or you get some, some strange artifacts. You can fix that just by changing all the random. So it will be something different, but okay. So for instance, here, you see that you have here the hoof and probably is it's two hoof there, so that is anatomically speaking, it's not right. So there are many ways to fix that, okay? But this is probably will be just to choose another generation and likely you will get what you want or probably you can change steps or CFG and so on. Usually this one, I think when you have this you now run anatomy, they didn't have a, a strong influence. It's quite difficult to control that. So we go back to the issue of the of hands you now getting hands with the five fingers and so on it's quite can be quite tricky and later i'm going to show you something so see that i change now this one even if you are in this uh resolution you get kind of something cartoonish okay and let me go back and just to show you the issue about hands so i was working here you now and using this uh 
provider here. And just to show you about all this generation with sans, so I put my specific pro now do this. So it is really photorealistic. It is amazing. Everything looks like a photo, but then the hands, you start to see that you have many artifacts. So it's quite tricky to control hands. So there are different models, very specific for that. But what I want to say here is that you are not going to avoid this with negative prompts. Okay. You need to force that using your positive prompt. And okay. So here we have our image and so on. So nothing, nothing strange here. So what I want to show you also here, talking about these negative prompts, um, for instance, they can have a very, very strong influence in your, in your output. So let me go and add this here. Okay. So as I say, you know, I prefer to fix my composition here in your positive prompt rather than in the negatives. Negative put the basic stuff. And to show you that sometimes you will find around some very, uh, very, very elaborated prompts. And that's just due to the fact that they are trying to fix everything there. So look at this prompt, extremely elaborated. And you start to look prompts that are really, really elaborated. Okay, the positive part. So they try to get it right here in the positive. And then the negative is small stuff. It's not like you are going to fix extra eyes or background faces or things like that. So focus in your positive prompt. So see that now I like, added these keywords, majestic, photorealistic, hyperrealistic, bokeh, epic, award winning. And it's a much, much better composition. Okay, you don't have those two hoofs anymore now is running probably in the surface of the moon i don't know but it's quite nice so something that you will notice also is you look at here at the visor you will see that you have a reflection kind of if it was in the moon so that's that will tell you that the the data was trained with some images there but any case that can be also fixed so you see that here i'm super happy with this no need to go and do more elaborated sense. So let me go here, erase that one. And let me go to the starting prompt, to a starting image, erasing everything. So you can see that positive, they do have a very, very strong influence. And using also reminder, reminder that this is everything now XDXL. And there are many variations just to go back here. The jogger now is a fantastic one. So you have many versions. I like to work with version six, no, uh, version seven, which is the latest. I still have some problems. Okay. So it's quite re recent. And there is another one that I'm going to show you the, the last video. Okay. Later is also photorealistic, but at the, the, like the turbo is the XL turbo. So see that now we have this one. Okay. I changed there and look at that. The prompts are so important that even if you add a comma, look at that. I'm going to add a comma. Maybe sometimes you're going to find some, some prompts that they add that comma or two or three commas that can have an influence. So let's see what happens with this comma there. Sometimes can be a big influence, sometimes not much, sometimes can fix your problems. But as I say, and I just want to, to stress that, fix everything in your positive prompt. So let's see what happens with that comma there. And there you go. So you see that it makes it worse. It changed a little bit, but it makes it worse, but you see the influence. So now also let me change my sampler and let me use the Euler Ancestor. This is the one I uh, like to use. So there are many of them. It will be up to you to test all of them. So I don't want to go into details there. So that is just the mathematics just to do you know, the denoising and everything. So different methods, different outcomes. Personally speaking, the older ancestor and then, uh, normal scheduler will give me the, the best results. So now using older ancestor, very nice. So you fix everything much better than the previous one. And let me erase that comma there that is there and let's see what happens now so we fix everything so these values you will see that is they are recommended no these are the recommended values so you can play with them but likely you're going to convert to the same value so usually you put more steps you're going to get more fantasy in your composition but it is more time consuming i would say that 15 will be the minimum actual minimum here in sdxl and there you go you saw 
that there is a large difference with that comma. That being said, I'm happy with this and I, I hope my advice is stay with this simple workflow. Then if you want to do elaborated scenes, you can add the refiner. Let me show you how to add the refiner. So here I'm using the base library and, and if I go back here, remember that there is another step. So you have a latent space and you need to pass that. So this is a little bit more complicated. So somehow we need to and let me do something. By the way, uh, let me show you also something about, and let me go here back to the documentation, this one in Twix. There is sometimes you will see this clip value and now the, the process is clip in minus two, minus one, or from the second to last. Here also, let me go, uh, let me put that information and here, let me go clip and this, you will have this keyword that sometimes a little bit strange. People don't understand what is happening. And let me show that my advice here, read what is in here now. So you will see that it has to be with the ledgers that you are using with your, with your prompt. But let me add that here. So to add that one, you go here, this one, and now you connect here and here. Okay. So a small modification, but let's see what happens. So now this is telling you that here is where you have those you no know, neural nets and so on and how you are training everything. So here's you put minus one, every single layer is going to be used. Okay. To get the information here, your prom and your latent space. So it will be, you are going to have more, let's say, if I can use that term, more fantasy in your composition. And here you, you will have the explanation. Now the, the earlier you stop, the less layer of network network have worked on your prompt. That is less fantasy that you can go here, the same comment that you can find. You might, okay. And there it's working and look at that. This is the default value in Comfy UI and this is with minus one. So this means that you use all your layers to get this composition. And if I change it to minus two, Okay, we're going to get the previous value, which seems to be the default value in Comfy UI, but also might be related because some of these models they are relate they are trained like this. So they will stop in the second to last layer. They're not they don't take all the layers. And you increase this value and you will see that this composition there is less fun fantasy you know so from layer to layer you are going to take these parameters and you have more fantasy so let me go and put here 10 and let's see what happens okay so it should be something that would be very different from this and let's wait and there you go so you start to see less fantasy probably you start probably, so you see here, there a moon. And this is what I say that there probably in this case, we can use the negative prompt to remove this, that it was at by the model. It's not part of your main composition. This is your main composition. And here there is nothing to do. You cannot say there erase the, the astronaut or erase the extra leg in the horse or whatever. So here's that random stuff that you see there. And let's see if it works. Now, if I put here moon and let's see if it managed to erase, sometimes it will erase, but then it will change something else. So coming back to this documentation, I here I recommend you, you have the comment here that many models have been trained with this minus two. So you have to be careful that. And usually also, sometimes you can get better results with minus two. So see that I put no more, you have the moon there, but then you have even the horse there is not very good. So my advice there, leave minus two or don't put that there. It will be minus two by default or it will use the default no value in the model. But this is something that you can control. And many times when you when you try to re reproduce some results, now you see now that for instance, you go here in, in one of these and you start to look for the information for, for a specific image. They're going to talk about that click value and that's, that's what it, what does it means that clip. So that being said, let me stay with this image and let's add the refiner step. Okay. So let me go here. Oh, oh no, I don't want to open here, have it there. 
and to add the refiner it's a little bit different at first i need to erase this one okay so let me erase this one and i need to add a new one so you go to k sampler and you need to add the advanced one okay so remember there is a customized one for the turbo the standard one and this is the advanced that we need to use for refiner so it works pretty much in the same way okay so i will go here and let me connect to the model let me get positive negative prone you have your latent image and then you connect here and nothing will change and let me talk a little bit these options so this is very important enable this one in your base model so basically this is telling add noise in each layer in each step at fantasy this one also it would say that depends how you stop your process okay so later this will make more no sense let me go back and put and put here same numbers here fix 20 so let's say that i want to do 20 steps this value let me use the ancestral the scheduler normal you have different so many people also recommend the caras there so it's up to you and here you have this one so you have 20 steps and these options also are better explained in and let me go back again to automatic 11 11 so you have all this stuff better explained and actually in automatic 11 11 you will find some slides where how to control that those options that let me see now they're below here and you will see how to control those steps okay so basically start at zero so if you start at five means the first steps, you are not adding any noise, any fantasy. So there will be some difference. So for some specific purposes, you would like to do that. Here in our case, we want to do everything. And now I want to say here, stop at 15, let's say. So it will do a total of 20 iteration. Start from zero, stop at 15. It will be adding noise and everything. And let's see what we get here. So we're going to get an image, but it's state stopping at 15. And then the other five steps, I can connect that to another sampler. And in that second sampler, I can add another model. That second model will be my refiner. That is another specific model now to add more details. So let's see what we get here. And this is what we get. So do not, okay, do not enter in, par in panic. This is okay. So this is your image, Latin space. This is your, your noise. So this is what you are getting. And now let's add the other step here. So I need to add the advanced sampler. Okay, that this will correspond to my refiner. And pretty much it will be this similar connections, okay? Let me also add, let me double this one clone. And here I need to load the refiner and see that I have that refinement. Remember that you can download that from the website of XDXL. Then this one, you need to clip this one. So let me, let's connect this one here. So you connect this model. The positive, my advice is to use exactly the same positive and negative prompt. So connect the same there. So, okay. I connected those there and then I need to create another latent here decoder and a preview of my image i put it here okay so as you see when you start understand now this step what is happening it's quite easy to create these connections and let me see what i'm missing okay so here i'm missing okay clipping also need to here this one okay clip here Clipping means connect there and then the buy is connected with this. So now I have all my connections. And if I click this, what is going to happen? You are reading now the second model. You have already this latent space ready. And what is happening is giving me an error there. What was ta ta ta? Let's see. What was okay. So yeah, I need to also here. So I have 20 steps. I need to start in 15. So you have to be careful and run a maximum 20. Let me disable, disable. Uh, let me put zero there and fix. And let me use the same sampler. So be careful here. I start at 15. I have a ton total of 20 steps. 
that you put the same number here and then it start at 15 it stop at 20 and um, ta -ta 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 -ta, what is happening condition negative negative and clip clip bye bye okay so i'm missing a connection somewhere bam, 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 bam. okay let me see so it's telling the error it is here okay so let me see if i can pinpoint that error the clip the mod goes there deleted so let me disconnect this one remove okay so i have here a problem bam 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 enable enable 2020 what was my problem here normally there okay i don't see the problem there okay okay so i don't see the problem there let me do something that i already have that somewhere here let me go and use my model that i already prepared so basically i was doing those connections and let me go i think it should be this one okay yeah this one already prepared. So pretty much it's all this spaghetti. So look at that. Advanced, you connect with your clip model, okay, your latent space, and so on. So let me do sim a simpler one. Let me use a simpler one because that one has an extra layer of complexity. Okay, up. This one. I know, no, this is the base. This is the, that is the basic basis. So this is the one. Okay. So here I have the three layers. Let me go Q. So basically the first one, see that 20, my parameters are stuck at 15. And then you pass to the second one, which is this one. This one is connected to my refiner. So look at that. My model base model refiner model is start at 15, go to the last one. Okay. So can put 20 there so it doesn't matter will it stop always at 20. uh then i put here a random number it doesn't matter this is important i'm fixing this one to get my same composition and this is the extra refining so this is the noise i get at the beginning and then this is stop here this is step here this is my standard latent uh latent space like the the default workflow okay so see that i not adding anything so i want to have my base image this one that let me close it i'm going to get it here and then i'm going to compare you now this one i stop at 15 and then i will add the refiner then here i have my base composition with no refiner so this is already something super super good and happy and here now i'm passing this latent to this second one and adding the refiner and there you go so i think it's quite clear the difference so as you can see it add a little bit more details not necessarily will be better so probably here in the helmet kind of is trying to put a face it's not very nice here you see that can check here the hoof have a second hoof or probably a shadow something like that but clearly in this case you have more details so this example now taking the same now prompt used in the by stability diffusion what's out here now and using exactly their same prompt i have a few issues but it's not a big deal hopefully you get an idea of what is happening so this is basically the refinery we'll add more details personally speaking as i say i don't use it very often i don't see the point honestly or at least for me i i I don't want that level of details. I can fix everything with my positive prompts and get all those details. And, and maybe later I can I, I can do some upscaling. I find I found that upscaling is much better than doing this stuff, and it is less probably it's less expensive. So yeah, this is it. Your workflow here is a little bit messy. Okay, so I still added the 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 clip. It's very helpful. Then be careful about your dimensions. And here also use the same when you stop, start the second one. The first one you can fix the number, and then this one you can do it random. It doesn't matter. And now just to show you the diff, what happens is I enable this option. So basically at noise and coming back, you have some limited documentation. So here you can see what 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 will happen with uh, 
case and product band. So as you go here, sometimes you have a short explanation what is doing that and so on. So basically add noise, it will add noise here. Okay, so let's see what happens. I have random values, okay, and let's see what we get. And this is what you have. That is the noise that you get. So that's why we disable. So remember that that noise is the fantasy that is, is being added, that then somehow you will need to decode that to get something much better, but that is what is happening. You add that fantasy and so on. And then this value, okay, so usually the refiner, you disable this one, and this is up to you if you want to disable it. I always leave it disabled, okay? I haven't seen much different, but that depends on the number of steps. So if you disable this one, it will say that it's going to denoise your image just in the last step. So here you have five steps. So the last one is where it's going to do the, no the noise. If you put it here, every single step is going to the noise. So if you have many steps and you enable this one, it might be longer computation, but it might get you better results. Instead, in this case that we have a small, let's say a string there, uh, the result is not going to change much. Now there are just five steps, but if you have there 20 steps, it might be a big difference. Now if you disable that. So it's up to you, you can try. So my advice here would be use five, now five steps difference. Now it's okay if you have more than five or 10, better enable, okay? So let me enable here just to show the difference. So disable, enable, There you go. And now let me disable. And the difference basically it will be nothing or very, very small, very difficult to, to get it here. There you go. Basically, I think there was no difference. Okay. So it's up to you. Honestly, if you have many steps, probably this uh, uh, better to enable to avoid no introducing errors. Okay, so this is this workflow. The, 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 we have no, and let me go. So my advice, as I say, I don't find any advantage in using that refiner for me. It's okay. I stay with this one. This is perfect. Fine. If you want refiner, then you can just add a second step there. So you will need to connect your boxes there. In this case, I have three samples because also I want to see my original image. And now let's go to this workflow that seems a little bit complicated. And just to remind you that you can put some order here. So for instance, you can select, select here, select here with control, and then you go convert to group. You give it a name, like we call it group one, and you put everything in a single group and you're putting everything in order. So also this one, you can convert already put here, this one. I parameterize the variable. So for instance, right click here and let's say convert uh, add noise to input. Okay. And now you have this input here and you can create a box and you can parameterize it. So let me go at no, that would be a primitive. And there you will have, you know, the auction at noise and so on, how to choose. And then you can connect it with the other. So basically what is happening here is that all those groups will will create it and so on. And also we have right click at group and we have kind of this post it and you put everything that you put there, it is attached. So let's visit this one. And from where I took this one, this is the basic, uh, let me go, ah, I close that. Ah, I close that now. Okay, so let me go here, and that was a coffee UI. Okay, those are the basic examples. So I have it here. And here, honestly, I stay here. This basic example are more than enough. And I'm using this one. Okay, so our first thing was the turbo. Now I'm using this one. And here you have these images and so on. So if you drag and drop the images, this is very handy. You take it and you put it there, you get that. So it's quite cool. This, for instance, this one is a little bit different. 
okay so you have different workflows just drag and drop the image and you will get it so let's visit what happened here so what what is happening so you created a group there you right click so nothing new you put the tabs here you load your base and load the refiner this is a note so you can add notes right uh, right click utils note so you put an, a comment there, so it can be very helpful. So read that. So you load in the two models and then you connect here. Okay, previously I know the buy was my problem. Okay, so here you click here and you connect to the text. Here you have the text condition. So basically what happened here is that you parameterize the text. So all the models needs to get this prompt. They're connected to a single one, so you connect it there and there some comment there then this one you connect to your sampler so you sample your links your latent comes from here and here also you parameterize steps so see that remember right click and you can choose what to parameterize now so you go convert and then you create this this entry so you create here then you create for instance let me raise here and i can go here add a new in like this and it will be that entry so it's up to you to add your primitive you now so previously it was a primitive so we connect there you have so in this case 25 steps stop at 20 pass this information to the other one the refinement the refinement will start where this one stops okay We'll use the same number and then we'll go to the decoder and you have your image. And let me suppress this. And let me only preview the image. And if you click create, okay, uh, I mess around with something. Let me go the original one here, preview and suppress, right click, bypass. Okay, no, I didn't mess, I forgot that. Remember to select the location. So might be different locations. And there you go. So you start to do your steps. First step is the base model. So here you have recalled the previous one. So let me go, I have it here. So you're going to get something like this. Then you pass that latent here and that latent you're going to apply the refiner. And there you have so very much i think this these options that you get here you can use it as, the, uh, as default i prefer to do 20 steps but here they use 25 it will be a little bit longer so it will be up to you and there you go so this will be the default case that is always this bottle so it's a nice actually i have to say it's a very nice case you have your bottle there so you can run this one without this one and you will see that Pretty much, there is no difference, it's very small. So now just to end, let's do the second case, that the second prompt that I have this one. So let's put this one here, a majestic lion jumping, whatever. So what I mentioned about uh, documentation, and let me go, is the XL model car. Here they recommend uh, like to do 20, 80, 20%, no. So 80% will be the base model, 20% will be the refiner. So you, you do the steps, no, you look at the step, we have 25 and then you do your math, you will see that 20 will be about 80% and then the other five will be that 20%. So there you go. So I have to say that this is this is very darn impressive now. Okay. And uh, let me go also have here a specific value here. So let me go for this one. Let me put here. And I have some comments for this. Okay. So for instance, this one that let me do, and this is interesting case no, for benchmarking. It's only benchmarking. And let's do this standard value. Okay.
And there you go. We have even much better. So probably this leg is a little bit strange in any case. So let me go now. And I want to increase this to 40. Now I have my coming here, 40 steps. Okay, and then you stop here at 32, which is about 80%. And then that information, you pass it there. And that's all. Let me leave it like, like that. Let me open this image there. Let me put it there to have it as a reference. And let's redo. So it will be longer because now I have 40 steps. Okay, so we have our output here. So remember more steps, more fantasy. We have a different composition. So 40 steps, 32 doing the base, eight doing the refiner, refiner, refining. And remember here it's up to you. So I recommend you to this disable, disable, but might be the case that sometimes it might be better to enable this one just to to denoise every single image. Okay, to avoid when you have a lot of a lot of steps there, so it's up to you. Well, we have this nice composition, kind of complete, very impressive. And let me go back now just to show you the influence of steps and so on. But let me go back to the base case. I have OK. And now this was the image. And let's change a little bit. It still impresses nothing to say. So let's say that now. We want to add an Aurora Borealis there. So, go. And at this point, it's going to repeat. We have a new composition, and let's see what happens. And there you go. So, we have our new composition. So, our Aurora Borealis, it changed also the landscape, so kind of narrative one but okay very cool so this is how it works so the sdxl this is the refiner so as you see now I'll demonstrate here that there is not much but it will be up to you for me this is more than enough okay i don't like to use that refiner i prefer just to go for the ox scale in that there i can add some, some details so we covered that in a previous video so that's all for this video thank you for your attention do not forget to subscribe and see you next time bye